Hi Centenary! Librarian Sarah here from Taylor Memorial Library. I'm here today with the first installment of Lattes with a Librarian Home Edition. It's going to be a super informal conversation about everything reference, research, and instruction. So for those of you who know what I'm all about already, you know that I love talking about information literacy or the skills that we all need to be able to successfully navigate this increasingly saturated information landscape that we all currently live in. So I'm talking about everything from our social feeds to the research databases that we have at the library, news media, of course, the billboards we see out on the road, and even ads that we see on platforms like Hulu or other streaming platforms. In short, do you know what you need to know when you need to know it? <laughs> Say that five times fast. Do you know where to go to find information about stuff, just general daily stuff that's credible and authoritative? Can you interpret the content in the world around you on a daily basis? These are big questions. They're big, important questions that we all face and that we that we all struggle with at one point or another in this information age and the way that we can help ourselves is to become mindful consumers of information taking our time with it and and really making sure we understand and recognize when information is needed when and where we can find it how to access it, how to evaluate it once we find it, and how to share it or use it, use it ethically in the world around us. So full disclosure, before we actually get started with today's topic, this isn't actually a latte. It's black tea. I've actually never had a latte ever. I, I don't drink coffee at all, but I couldn't pass up an alliteration like latte with a librarian. There we have it. So let's get to it. Today I wanted to start with a topic that a lot of people probably wouldn't think about when thinking about doing research in the context of, you know, maybe writing a research paper. But I thought it was really important, especially with what's going on in the world right now with COVID-19 and making sure that we are taking care of ourselves and making sure that we are staying informed and getting, uh, getting the right information and the correct information about the issues that are currently going on. So I'm gonna be talking about information overload. What is it? What causes it? and how it can be avoided or how we can uh, lessen the effects when it inevitably happens to us because believe me, it definitely does for everybody. So information overload is the exposure to too much information. Oftentimes it's irrelevant. Oftentimes it is infactual. Oftentimes it's coming from uh, a source that is not authoritative, somebody that we shouldn't necessarily be trusting. And it often leads to the inability to understand a concept or an issue or make a decision. So here's an easy example, Netflix. How many times have you sat down with the intention of starting something brand new only to scroll for 10, 15 minutes through hundreds of titles before choosing that show that you've watched a thousand times. For me, that show is always The Office. But we do this because it is too overwhelming. There are so many choices. We can't decide because our choices seem unlimited. This is an information overload. Brain fog. Brain fog. The same thing can happen when catching up on the news or looking at articles in the databases, it's all the same thing, that brain fog. Brain fog. We can't seem to, to see through that because there are too many choices. We don't find what we need, we get frustrated, and we give up. So how can we combat this? How can we avoid this from happening? 
to begin with and what what are some things that we can do to help it once it's already started. So I have my top five recommendations and I actually practice these myself so I know that they work to an extent uh, and if anybody has any other suggestions I'm, I'm happy to hear them. Um, you know, we can always help each other out. Here are my top five recommendations. Number one, brain dump and be clear. So make a list of everything floating around in your head. Just get it out, write it down, all of it. No matter what it is, it could be as silly or as, imp as important, whatever, put it down. From there, you can categorize your thoughts into a now, later, and eventually making it clear what you need to focus on moving forward. Number two, skip alerts and unplug. Turning off all alerts except for text messages on my phone was probably the best thing I have done ever. I have no, I do not have any of those annoying red bubble numbers reminding me about things or being a constant distraction to what else I have going on. So setting limitations like this on yourself and actively checking your most heavily trafficked apps intentionally instead of subconsciously at set intervals is a good way to stay on track and not to be distracted by information pinging into your life at a, at a high, high rate that most of us can't keep up with at all. And also just put your phone down sometimes. Put it in a different room and walk away. I promise it feels really good. Number three, don't multitask. Our brains trick us into thinking that we can do it, but we, we really, really can't. So turn off YouTube if you're writing a paper, stop scrolling Instagram if you're watching a movie. Single tasking makes tax, tasks more exciting to do. Number four, empty your inboxes. So don't leave messages in your email inbox. I know this one is, is really, really challenging because most of us have emails coming in all the time and it's very hard to keep up with it. But once folders are created, the practice of filing messages at the end of the day or at you know whatever time of day you want to do this in, it, it's really freeing. Because if you go into your inbox and there's nothing there, you're like, oh, it takes away your mental clutter, which, or I'm sorry, your digital clutter, which is another mental, uh, you know, it has another mental impact on us. So create those folders, folders, file those important messages, and at the end of each day, while you're deleting or filing, so un unsubscribe from messages that are completely unwanted, and then you won't have to deal with those in the future either. And then finally, number five, use a timer. Don't spend too long on any one task or one thing or one project. Set limits and spread your work out. Of course, this requires project management and the ability not to procrastinate, uh, but that's a conversation for another day. I would recommend not using your phone as the timer, which is the default for all of us, I know, uh, but you know, like a kitchen timer or, um, some other timer makes it a lot easier. You don't have that distraction in front of you. You're, you're limiting that multitasking. You're limiting those new messages coming in. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind as well. So just as a quick wrap up, remember we need to be mindful consumers of information and we need to mitigate the effects of information overload on a day-to-day -day basis. The five recommendations that I talked about today were to brain dump, skip alerts and unplug, put your phone down, don't multitask if you can avoid it, empty your email inboxes at the end of each day, and use a kitchen timer to keep yourself on task. So that's information overload. Thank you so much for tuning in for the first installment of Lattes with a Librarian. I hope you found some or all of this information useful and you'll tell your friends to tune in to the next installment. Stay safe, be well. I'll see you at the next one. Cheers.
brain fog.